Good morning. Today we are going to discuss creep deformation in materials and its characteristic. As we know, creep is a very important factor which leads for deformation in materials. We will see its characteristic. Now, in today's course we are going to discuss basic introduction of creep and its importance in material engineering classical creep curve and we are also going to discuss its stages the effect of the temperature and stress on creep characterization of creep and we will also discuss creep test and the various stages in it now what is exactly the creep creep may be defined as a time dependent deformation at elevated temperature and constant stress then a failure from such an condition is referred to a creep failure or occasionally we call it as a stress rupture the temperature at which creep begins depends on the alloy composition that means the composition of the particular material leads to creep deformation which includes temperature also now creep is a time dependent def deformation under certain applied load generally it occurs at high temperature and the, and it also happens at room temperature in certain materials like lead or glass as a result the material undergoes a time dependent increase in length which could be dangerous while in service in general condition boilers are subjected to creep boiler materials now now we can see a classical creep curve and its stages if you see in the x axis we have depicted time and in the y axis we have depicted the strain that is extension of the test piece in the very first level we can see the primary creep and the second stage that is secondary creep and the third is as tertiary creep let us discuss on the creep stages the very first stage is called as the creep primary creep that starts at a rapid rate and slows with time in the very second stage that we called as secondary creep which has a relatively uniform rate as we can see from here in the tertiary creep it has an accelerated creep rate and terminates when the material breaks on rupture it is associated with both necking and formation of grain boundary voids now we can see the effect of temperature and stress in the x axis we can see time and the very y axis we can see creep strain and the various temperature and strain curve we can see there now what are the characteristic of creep creep in service is usually affected by changing condition of loading and temperature as we have already discussed the two very uh, main characteristic of creep is loading and temperature the number of possible stress temperature time combination can be infinite this is one of the major characteristic of creep and the last but not the least the creep mechanism is often different between materials plastic rubber and concrete it means the creep deformation will be different in material like metals and same it will be different as plastics and something different in rubber and also concrete the characteristic of creep the failures are character, characterized as we how can we see that how can we understand there is a failure through creep number 1 bulging or blister on the tube thick edge fracture often with very little obviously ductility external or internal oxide scale thickness and intergranular voids or cracks in microstructure now uh, how do we understand that the particular material will be failing for creep so we we conduct creep test for the particular material before it goes for production the very first uh, thing which we have to know about creep test it measures dimensional changes accurately at constant temperature 
and constant load or stress. Useful for modeling long term application which are strained limited. Provides prediction of life expendency before service. This is very important for the turbine blades. These are the three general phenomena for why we are doing crypt test. Now let us understand the basics of basic of crypt test. The number one, it measures strain versus time at constant T and load. Constant temperature and load, it measures the strain and strain versus time. It is relatively low loads and crypt rate. Long duration, it can go to 2000 to 10,000 hours. It, it is not always for fa uh, fracture and strain is typically less than 0.5%. Now as I just said, crib is, uh, crib occurs generally at elevated temperature and it is common for this type of testing for perform to be environmental chambers for precise heating, cooling, control etc. Temperature control is critical to minimize the effect of the thermal expansion of the sample. As it I said, crib goes with hand in temperature. When there is a temperature rise and deformation, we go for crib. Now, how to go for crib test procedure? We will uh, understand it systematically. Step 1. The unload specimen is first heated to the temperature T and the gauge length is measured. The very first step, we uh, heat the particular specimen up to temperature T. And the very second step, the predetermined load is applied quickly without stock. Now this particular setup we will be discussing in the very next slide. Step 3, measurement of the extension are observed at frequent interval. Now the extension is measured in very frequent interval. Step 4, average of about 50 readings we take. This you can see a schematic diagram of crypt test apparatus where the load cell is shown where we will be keeping the specimen and the hydraulic pump to regulate the specimen and for the load. So in this uh, particular course we have studied, we can uh, summarize the whole topic. We have understood CRIP and it's the various steps, uh, stages of CRIP, the various characteristic of CRIP, effect of the CRIP on temperature and strain and also the CRIP testing method and the schematic. I hope that this video will help you to understand CRIP well. Thank you.